Hello, you all. I hope that this is not distracting. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe I should take off uh, some of these. Oh, that's good. That's better. All right. It's Jenny here, and I'm on the HCG diet, giving you my daily log on how I'm doing, the good, the bad, the ugly, the everything. All right. Um, and then I have something interesting I'm going to share with you today um, at the very end, which is not from Dr. Simeon's protocol, but something that I found beneficial. I got on the scale today, and the scale said 158.9. Yes. I tell you, my weight is like, we've already discussed how that happens. So um, I'm just really happy. Let me tell you, last night when I finished teaching my classes, my stomach felt like I could literally feeling it like shrinking. It was like so tight in that, but it, it didn't really feel like hunger. It like literally felt like I did a bunch of crunches or something like that. Um, and my stomach wasn't growling or anything like that. And then I took my drops afterwards and then that, that sensation went away and I went to bed. Now I woke up this morning. It's interesting when I wake up in the mornings, I never feel like really as thin as I do like when I go to bed. So there's something with the HCG hormone, maybe like satisfying you or whatever it does to be the appetite suppressant that kind of makes me like nervous to get on the scale. <laughs> I was nervous to get on the scale because I thought I ate really well yesterday and I really felt before I went to bed that like, oh, things are happening. I can feel like I'm losing weight. And I didn't go on the treadmill yesterday because I did feel a little bit more lethargic than I normally do. And that's usually a sign that my body's burning a lot of calories um, and it's using up the energy in my fat uh, reserves. So um Although I hauled big boxes full of paper and scrapbooks from my basement all the way up two flights of stairs, about five of those boxes, and then a few other boxes onto the first floor. So I was moving, I definitely, not even about five, I definitely did five boxes upstairs, if not more. Um, so, uh, I mean, the one time, by the time I was just, <laughs> I was going, <sighs> with every step I was taking because it was so heavy and I was so like fatigued kind of. Um, but I'm like, I'm going to get all the way upstairs. I'm going to make it all the way up to the top of the step. I needed all this product to do a bunch of stuff to prepare for my weekend retreat. I needed to organize it, get it in boxes, figure out what I had, what I'm taking, what I'm not. And I, it's just easier for me to do it on the second floor because that's anyway, it, I don't need to know why. Nevertheless, I did some exercise, even though I didn't get on the treadmill. It'll be interesting to see how today goes. I got up at 4.30 yesterday morning. I taught my classes. I dove right into working on my scrapbooking retreat, and I did it literally all the way up until 7.30 at night when I uh, started my classes again until 9, and then went to bed and got up again this morning at 5.30. Uh, well, I got to bed by 10. I finished classes at nine. I got to sleep by 10 and, uh, four 30, I was up and I did it again today. This is, a, this will be going on the fourth day that I don't take my one hour power nap in the middle of the day, which is hard for me because I need nine hours of sleep. Oh, and I'm not going to get nine hours over the course of the weekend. So I need to figure it out. I need to figure out what's going on. Um, I need to get my life together and get some sleep. So just a lot of things to do. What can you do? You have 80 women coming for three days at a hotel and I have to care to all their needs and, and make sure that it's a wonderful event, not just that they're there and that they have their basic needs met. So it's just a lot. All right. That's okay. It's my job. It's fine. So 158.9 is what the scale said. Halle, hallelujah. So that was a loss of 1.3 pounds. Um, which made me happy because two days ago, after my five day stall, essentially I lost 1.3, gained 0.3 back, but then lost 1.3 again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, excited. I'm excited. So 158.9 makes me happy. That's very close to 159. And for me to put on a pound in a day is not unheard of. I usually don't put on a pound in a day. I usually put on a little less than that if I go back up, but uh, we'll see. I am, I am, uh, I think out of vegetables. No, I did find some more vegetables in the freezer. So I still have fish and vegetables. Actually, I still have chicken too. I think I'll have chicken again today because I want to get rid of that bag of chicken. 
Um, and uh, I just have a lot of errands to run. I got to go out and run a bunch of errands today. Tons of things to do. I hope it's not another day where I'm working from five in the morning until nine o'clock at night again, but it may be. What can you do? All right. So happy, happy, happy about how the numbers are looking. Happy that I stuck with it. Happy that I didn't give up. Um, and things are resolving with my retreat. A lot of the issues and stressors that were happening were all occurring at the time that my weight stalled. And so I thought that I had some cortisol issues going on uh, with my weight stall. I have these little passages that I read every day, little motivational things to kind of pump me up and get me going on the day. This is the 150 most important Bible verses, it says. All right. It's, re- it's written very simply, and it's very interesting. The book is divided into uh, categories for men, for women, for teens. I don't know what the other one is because I haven't gotten to it. So anyway, I've read, oh, I've read for everyone, the verses for everyone. I mean, every verse is for everyone, but they kind of, you know, broke them up and thought these are some. Um, so I did the the everyone, the men, the women, and I'm in the teen section right now, which is interesting. I end up like screenshotting a lot of these pages and sending them to my kids, even though my older daughters are in their 20s now. Um, almost. My second child turns 20 on the 15th of February. Um, So at any rate, they're applicable to everybody. It's the Bible, folks. (laughs) Every verse is applicable to everyone. And um, interestingly, um, this one came across. It's funny how one might call it a coincidence one might find a divine intervention. Here's the verse that I just came across that I thought I'd share with you. It's from Psalm 119, uh, verse 143. As pressure and stress bear down on me, I find joy in your commands. So I thought, well, this is interesting. Um, So I'm just going to read briefly this little bit. It's very short, but if it benefits anybody, and helps them in their life. If there's anybody who's stressed out there and goes through something and just needs something to read or to hear to kind of give them peace, I don't know. This just gave my soul some peace when I read it. So I thought I'd read it to you. Um, Now, this is not from the Bible anymore. This is the author's kind of interpretation of the verse, if you will, or life application part of it. Um, And this is what it says. From stress to joy. When pressure and stress of life are building, joy is a welcome find. Few people like to be told what to do. And yet, when God asks you to do something, it's different. It's different because God asks you to do the things that will make your life easier and more enjoyable in the long run. His requests are based on his deep love and true concern for your life. When Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, he replied that people should first love God and then love others. A practical example of how God's commands can bring you joy is found as you focus each day on loving God and loving others. Something happens when you turn the focus away from yourself Um, away from yourself. (laughs) By turning the focus on others, you spend less time stressing about yourself. Plus, it simply feels good to love on and help other people. God's instructions are a loving plan for a successful and enjoyable life. God knows the challenges that you face. God asks you to love others as you would love yourself. He asks you to be honest and respectful. God wants you to put him first in your life. By following his directions, you will avoid and eliminate problems and confusion in your life. God's commands are a guide to living a fabulous life. Living on your own strength is a good way to get worn down. Embrace God's plan for your life and live in the joy that it brings. Isn't that nice? That's just really nice. Um, and I found that to be true. I really focused, I mean, I was so focused on my numbers and losing money and all the 
drama of everything that was going on and it was giving me so much stress and the weight wasn't coming off. I went through a five day stall. I was anxious. I was nervous. I was barking at people (laughs) because I just couldn't get past it. I just, I remember at one point just looking at my husband in the kitchen and I go, I feel like my spirit is broken (laughs) and I don't know why. And then I just went back to, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm going to focus and do what I do. Let the chips fall where they may. I will earn what I earn. It will be what it will be. My goal and my focus is to make this the best event possible for as many women as I have, um, as I can possibly get into the event. So, um, I just focused on making cute welcome gifts and making cute prize tags and making cute signs and making decorations and uh, making sure things are all set, ordering good food. You know, like I'm just like, I just decided to take a servant's heart and treat this retreat in that way. And let me tell you, on my list of like 50 things that I need to get done this week, I knocked out like 30 of them yesterday felt so good. That's not to say that other things are going to creep up and I'm going to have to add to the list because that just it's natural, but that's okay. I really felt so much better at the end of the day yesterday. And then I read this and I just thought that is just confirmation to me that yes, this is what you're supposed to be doing. The ultimate command when Jesus was asked, what's the most important commandment? We have these 10 commandments. Which one's the most important? Which one should we be focusing on? He just said, love God, love others. That should be your focus in life. That should be the command that is going to bring you joy and make you happy. Let me tell you, spending less than five minutes every day reading one little verse and then somebody's interpretation of it or not their interpretation of it so much as as an expansion of it and a life application part of it brings me joy, brings me closer to God. And then serving other people really brings me joy. I mean, if you have kids, you know, your life is that of a servant. You do everything to make them happy. You would do anything to have your kids smile. You would give up everything yourself. I always thought it was impossible when, before I had kids. I remember thinking, everyone talks about how like, oh, I'd give my life for my kid. I can't imagine giving my life for anybody. <laughs> like I just really wasn't a very selfish, self-focused part of my life. It was all about me. It was about how much money I could make. It was about um, the status of my job and the title that I had. And it was just kind of like what vacation can top the next one to get on Facebook. I haven't even posted probably my last five vacations I took. People don't even know where I went and what I did. I have just changed the focus of my life. And it's not all about me anymore. It's about um, serving other people and it makes me really happy and it brings me peace and joy. So there are times in life like last week where I lose perspective of that and I become very me-centered and it doesn't really work. <laughs> it doesn't really work. So I hope that that bring, brings some perspective to somebody who may be going through something today um, and brings you a little bit of joy yourself um, as it did for me. All right. And I hope it helps you lose weight on the scale. Re- removing that stress is a good thing. Um, and the numbers will start to go down. Stress is no bueno. Not good. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.